All right, so in this POC ladder logic video, what we're gonna talk about is uh, some ladder logic that controls a pallet. Uh, now this is a pallet sorting system. So meaning if it's a big pallet, it will go one direction. And if it's another, if it's a small pallet, it will go a different direction. Now that, it, that does work off these photo eyes right here. And there are stops that we will be controlling to meter and separate the actual pallets. Now, let me explain to you, we're gonna start at is rung zero. Uh, this is our standard stop, start button. Um, and I can actually go over there and show you where that button is located real quick, just so we're all on the same page uh, when it comes down to it. So the start button is start, stop, and the e-stopper right here on this push button station. Um, so we have the start push button, the stop push button, the e-stop, and we have the start light. So we want to turn on the start light. Now we have another bit, which is machine run, and we're sealing that in. We're using that as a sealing circuit, as we talked about before. Um, and what will break the sealing circuit is if you hit a stop button, e-stop, and those two things will break the sealing circuit. Else, it will go ahead and allow the machine to run. Now there is a stop push button, which will uh, is being used to control the stop light. So if I push the stop light right here, you can see that the light comes on just like that, right? So uh, we will be starting the system. I just wanna talk you through the logic real quick so that you better understand how things are working. I did put notations in this actual program to help you better understand what we're trying to accomplish and what we are doing in this so that we can actually all understand logical controls behind this, right? Now, uh, in this right here, what we're doing is we're saying if the machine starts, we're doing a one shot, meaning this is going to execute one time and one time only. So once the machine starts, it should latch in the pre, um, the pre stop, which is the stop right here, right where this photo eye is. Uh, and then what it will do, it will latch itself in again using a seal in circuit until the photo eye, which is right here, is detects a pallet. And then what it will do is it will release the stop and then at that point in time allow the stop to, or allow the the pallet to carry on to the next conveyor now in rung two what we're doing is uh we can create a pallet now in the machine simulator we actually have to create our work so what we're doing is we're creating our pallet um, we're saying the machine is running pre-stop is and and this is an and or logic so meaning these two bits right here are working together as an and meaning pre-stop has to be on and the photo, photo cell has to be off. So those two things have to be in place and that's an and. So both these work in conjunction with an and to either create a pallet or we have the timer zero done with the photo I made that will also create a pallet. So we're trying to make a continuous flow and that's what we're trying to do uh, again with the machine simulator. Um, again, we talk about rung three, we're talking about rung three right here is again, using the machine run. And then it's I have making sure that the conveyor uh, distribute advance uh, is on. And that conveyor is the conveyor between the two stops, which is between the two photo eyes right here, the small conveyor right here. It's a, it's a metering conveyor. And we're basically gonna run that conveyor every time the machine is running. So we're gonna constantly run that conveyor there's really no need to shut it off because we're controlling everything with the stops. Now, um, as the machine runs uh, again and the distribution conveyor is on and the pre-stop is not on, then this timer will time out and that's what allows this to obviously make another pallet. Now, let's talk about rung four. Rung four is again, turning that small conveyor on and keeping it running. Rung five is coming down here saying, okay, the machine is running. Uh, there's no, uh, the photo cell pallet signal. Uh, there's no, that is not on for the photo cell. This photo right, right here, the chain is not up, meaning the chain on the backside is not up. And uh, we can go back there and show you that real quick. Uh, this back chain right here is not in the up position. Then we want to uh, advance the conveyor which there's a conveyor up under here that will allow the product to, or the pallet to move forward onto the chain conveyor. And that's what we're doing right here. And again, we're using a seal in circuit here. 
So we're saying if this happens, then we want to go ahead and seal that in. And then as soon as the chain conveyor raises, this does have an air cylinder in it and it will raise to go either or direction. Now let's talk about rung six. Rung six again, monitoring that the machine is running and that the photo cell is not active. Okay. And then we're going to turn on the last stop. As we turn on the last stop, we're going to actually turn on a timer and the timer is roughly around a quarter of a second. And then as soon as that timer is done, we're going to raise the chain. So we're going to raise this orange conveyor where the chain is and allow that to raise. Now, once the conveyor is up and we have it in up signal and the machine is running, we have it in up signal, then we want to uh, obviously run the, the conveyor belt, right? Now this conveyor belt does latch itself in until the chain is not actually running um, or until the chain is the chain up signal is not not um, it is indicated that it's down. Now uh, when it comes down to deciding and understanding what a high load is and a low a low pallet is and you all this will make perfect sense as soon as we restart the system. Uh, what we do is we have uh, a photo cell which is the very top photo cell right here. And if it's made, and it's made for two seconds, and, or basically if it gets made, we're gonna have a timer off. And that, what that's gonna do is gonna hold that bit high for two seconds. Okay, so it's gonna hold the done bit for that, which we're using down here. We're gonna hold that for two seconds. So we're determining and saying, okay, if this photo eye is blocked by a large pallet, then we want to hold it for two two seconds to allow it to pass through. Now, uh, down in the very bottom, we're allowing, uh, this is to, again, what my notations actually say here is run the pallet in the correct direction based upon the large load pallet or a small load pallet. So meaning, what did the photo cell up top say? Did it, was it detecting a large pallet or a small, or did it not detect anything? Because if it did not detect anything, we, we obviously want to go one direction or the other. And again, with that said, the machine has to be running. The last stop has to be up. The conveyor belts have to be running. And again, it has to have made a decision whether to run the chain conveyor one direction, either left or right. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and run the equipment to actually see how this runs. I'm going to start the uh, equipment and then we're going to head and so we're going to start the equipment right here. You see the stops come up right here. So the stops did come up as they are told to do. Now we're creating a pallet so the pallet should be on its way. Now this is a large load. So what it should do is it should come down and as soon as it goes to makes the large load it should decide down here whether to run it to a left or right. And it chose it, it chose to go right because it's a large pallet. As the photo eye, the big photo, or the, the photo eye up top detected it. Now this next one is a small pallet, uh, meaning it is not going to detect off the large photo eye. So it will go to the, again, to the neck, the left direction. Now let's go ahead and see that from a different perspective. Um, I think it's better to see from this perspective so you can easily see the photo eyes and see how it's making its conscious decisions on things working. Uh, and you see the way that the, the, uh, the stops are working. So again, when it comes down to the way the stop is working, the pre-stop right here is constantly working right here based upon what's happening down here. That's the pre-stop. The very first stop is called the pre-stop, right? This stop right here. Now that's stopping again and creating that separation between pallets so that we have a good metering system. The second or the last stop is controlled down here and that's going to be actually the last stop up and what we're doing is we're saying the last stop will go down and then it will come up right here. So it comes right back up as soon as the chain comes up. So you see it's up right now and then it goes down. So as soon as the photo cell gets made, it goes and it gets, it, it actually goes down. So as soon as the photo eye gets made, it goes down, allows the pallet to go to the next conveyor. And then it's up to the conveyor to go up and down 
uh, to actually raise that pallet so that the chain can actually take it one direction or the other. So otherwise, if it's down, it's a basically forward or reverse. It's basically allowing the, the pallet on the conveyor. And then if it raises up, then the chains take over and they run either left or right. So again, this is very simple logic um, ladder, when it comes to ladder logic and it's, it's not complex whatsoever. However, it is very kind of detailed. So this is a, a little bit more, um, I would say detailed than what we have shown on the prior things with the um, box sorting and stuff of that nature. This is basically a pallet sorting system, but you have to meter the product properly. And the way we're doing this again is through the stops and you can easily see that and we're actually coming in and doing it that way, right? So again, we can always stop the machine. Let's go ahead and stop the machine and I'll show you that the e-stop does work. So you see the machine is currently in a run state and what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll come in and hit e-stop. So if we hit a e-stop, everything completely dies and that's the reason because right now we have an e-stop circuit which broke our ceiling circuit for our machine run all right so with that said we come over here and we hit the start button again this will start the system back up and recover as it would so this is a nice system to actually track where the process is at is as simple as this logic is and you would think that you would need some kind of bit shift or something like that Honestly, this is something very simple as far as the way this uh, pallet system could actually be done and meter itself. It's, so this is, you can easily see how it's metering itself in. This conveyor in between the stops is naturally running slower. So it does give it a little bit more uh, separation like that. And as far as that goes, we add to the separation by using the stops. As you see the incoming conveyor, which the pallets are derived from, does run a little bit quicker so we do need to use this very first stop so with that said that backstop too does also protect the the pallet from actually running into the the chain conveyor when it's in the elevated spot so with that said hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video we'll see you guys on the next one